The third hole is a par 4 that has no bunkers. Instead, we're using slope and elevation change to create strategy and difficulty for this hole. We will also be building some more scenic areas for the course on this hole. Thank you for tuning in and let's get this build started. Hello, I hope you are doing well today. I'm going to do a little bit different video today. We're going to actually go through the creation of the whole layout and then also the finishing touches as well. Since like I mentioned in the previous video, I am ahead of schedule when it comes to course completion versus videos. So to start things off, I found a really nice path through the trees that would give us an elevated green and this nice little dip in the fairway. And I didn't really know at the time, but this was going to end up becoming one of my favorite holes on this little nine hole course. And I, I really just love the way that the fairway ends up being sloped and shaped. Um, it provides a really good strategic option for the golfer. Uh, in the end, you can play it high on the hill, have a little longer shot in the green, but it's level with the green. So you don't have the elevation change with a short wedge. Um, or you can take a little more risky drive, drive it down there towards the where it funnels into, and then you can have a shorter elevated pitch into the green. But anyways, getting right into the build, um, one technique I'm using with these spline points is to use mirrored handles. And so what that does is it stretches the opposite handle uh, exact and equal to the handle that you're moving. And this can give you the really nice smooth curves that a lot of people want for their fairways and that sort of thing. So I added the bunker down there at the bottom to kind of be the penalty for uh, getting too greedy with your drive and running through the fairway. And I wanted to have this green be very small and it's gonna be the smallest green on the course. But since this is a shorter hole um, and there's not much else uh, to the hole except for it's a little bit narrow and shorter. So uh, having the small green but a forgiving surround uh, brings the difficulty up on this hole without getting too extreme. So as you can see, we've got nice landing areas. If you do miss the green, you'll have a pretty easy chip coming back on, at least currently. Um, in the end, we crown the green a little bit, so it's a little harder to chip on. So to remove those trees at the very beginning, um, we just used a spline tool instead of hard deleting them in case we want them back later. But testing this hole, um, our drive came out really nice. We hit a little draw and that left us with a good pitch up the hill. It is a little bit harder to stop the ball coming up the hill, I believe. But anyways, back to editing. Um, I did notice that the fairway slope was not um, sending the ball towards the bunker like I wanted it to. So we had to do a lot of editing with the ground here to kind of get the ball to land off the tee as I had envisioned it to land. Because if we don't have that slope going away towards where the bunker is, then there's not really much point in laying up short. You could just always hit it long. And uh, so I really wanted to kind of protect, um, I guess going for driver off the tee right away. If you hit a draw, then you're safe. But if you just hit a straight shot with the driver, uh, it's pretty risky. So as you can see there, I've actually already removed the bunker. It didn't last very long. The big reason that I removed it is you couldn't see it from the tee box. And I had somebody in the TGC boards mention that uh, you really need to be able to see obstacles like bunkers from the tee shot so that if you're a golfer, you can account for that. You know, if you don't see a bunker and you just hit it thinking there's fairway, then all of a sudden you're in the bunker. Uh, that's really not very fun. And so here I'm using a little technique to try to blend the very rough rough <laughs> in with the like natural grass of the course. So I put down a spline of heavy rough and then just move some of the points in. So that kind of gives the natural grass like little areas where it's grown into the heavy rough that was placed. And I do prefer actually instead of just clearing objects, even just using the heavy rough going from the tee box to the fairway because then it looks like it's um, mowed and it's got some upkeep to it. 
Whereas if on the other hand, I just deleted all the trees there using the clear trees method or clear any generated objects, then I'd have like dirt patches and that sort of thing. And it wouldn't look like that's part of, you know, what the golf course actually keeps uh, up, you know, upkeep. So uh, this was my first go at a little creek side thing, and I'm really happy the way it turned out. I just wanted it to be a little something else off the tee, something to catch your eye or add some interest. And I think that's a very important thing to consider when you're making your course is what little things can add interest and make the course uh, seem more natural. The way I went about doing this creek is, of course, I had to make the creek bed itself first. So we're lowering the ground to barely get the water visible. Uh, if your train is too high and you've got to go too low to get the water, you can always place a water piece down in there to get the water. Um, all my elevation is low enough to where I don't have to do that. So we're going to keep working the terrain around the creek as well, and then we'll move into adding rocks and then some plants and grass and that sort of thing. I did also end up adding a fence later on, but I was not recording when I added the fence segment. Uh, so I'm just going to let this creek play for a little while since this is the first kind of uh, scenery tidbit of the series, but I'll chime back in in a few. So for a couple last little tips and tricks for doing some of this vegetation, uh, as you can see, I am using a tree as a bush just to give a little bit of variety and uh, to be a larger bush at the same time. When I was placing the grass, I found that scaling it up did really nice in this sort of area where the grass would not have been mowed for a very long time. And after finishing up the creek section, I just wanted to get one last look over the hole to see if there was anything that I missed as far as the rough goes or any rough splines and that sort of thing. And then I decided to add a farm over to the side. I thought this would give a good point of interest for the hole and add in a little bit of variety that you might not see at every course. So I needed to clear out a few trees so that you could actually see the farm from the course because if you can't see it then what's the point in building it and spending all of that time. So I did a quick fence line and with this sort of thing being a background detail I don't need to be too perfect with it or too detailed in fact. We just want to make sure that from the tee shot when you're coming in you notice it off to the side and that's the really the whole point of it to be there. So that looked pretty good but I did also notice that there was a couple of trees blocking so I went back in and added a rough spline so that we could knock out a few more trees and also I'm just going to kind of skip over the rest of that build and here's kind of what the final look and that is going to be all for this episode. I hope that you really consider adding some slope to the holes in your course. I also hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe so you can see the rest of this course unfold. The next hole is going to be the only par 3 on the course. So I'll see you in the next video.